Being how we are the bare minimum for what's able to produce regen, we feel that our results are really good to show what regen can do. Yeah, we what we have is just a different type of freedom. So, yeah, it is not a replacement <laughs> of a diesel yeah. at all. It's Hello. Hi, everybody. Today, we really want to talk about um, our electric motor and its regen properties that we discovered on our way across the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, so when electric motors started, there was a whole lot of kind of hype about electric motors and regen, and then it kind of all went away. And I was wondering, like, why? Because when we bought our electric motor, they told us, oh, regen's a thing, and on and on. The idea of regen is when you're sailing fast through the water, the propeller spins, and then that makes the motor spin like if it were a generator, which then puts power back into your batteries. So it's a cycle. It either goes from the batteries through and out the prop or back into the batteries. It has some issues. So it works really well on big boats that are moving fast. So if you're a day sailor, it's not going to do you much any good. Apparently, the minimum size to actually get appreciable regen is a 16-inch diameter propeller. So that's a pretty big prop. So that you find on larger boats. Like we have, we happen to be a 16-inch. So you need a 16-inch prop or bigger, and then you need at least three blades. If you have less than that, it's just not going to happen. Being how we are the bare minimum for what's able to produce regen, we feel that our results are really good to show what regen can do because you can only go up from here. We also relied solely on regen on our trip across the Atlantic Ocean because our solar panels just went kaput. <laughs> yeah, they corroded. We had them and then they were just space taking. And we have a lot of things on board that require electricity. Um, yeah, we mainly a, the refrigerator. Yeah, it's a 14 cubic foot fridge and freezer. Mm hmm. So. And we were able to keep that going the entire trip with our regen situ situation. Yeah. So the reason 16 inches seems to be the magical cutoff for when regen happens and when it doesn't is water is passing by the propeller. The longer the propeller blade is, the longer the lever arm is. So then a longer lever arm creates more torque at the same speed. So the electric motor people, I was talking with them about this, and apparently they had a guy that they were on, and he had a 22-inch propeller that had five blades, and he was making a full kilowatt at about six knots. When we're doing six to seven knots, we're making 0.3 kilowatts. So, and we have to be going six to seven yeah. knots. <laughs> yeah, if you're doing six knots, we're making about six amps. If we're doing five knots, we're making about two amps. And if we're doing four knots... Sometimes we get an amp out of it. It's it's pretty hit and miss. <laughs> so at low speeds, regen is not a thing. And for short trips, regen is totally worthless. Because when you think about it, if you're producing an amp in an hour and you're going out for a three-hour sale, you only produced three amps. And say you needed 20 amps to motor back into your marina, that means that you're not going to have the power to get back. Uh, That's where our generator comes in. Generator and solar panels. Yeah. yeah. So when we were coastal and going down the East Coast... It was all about the generator and the solar panels. Once we're out in the ocean, the regen did everything that we needed. So definitely, if you're on the fence about electric motors and all this, they are not a replacement of a diesel. Mm. Now, when you're out at sea, then they are a replacement for your generator and your solar panels and all that because they produce tons of power when you're sailing fast. And when you're out in the ocean, there's a lot of consistent winds, so you have the speed. Yeah, and you have the speed and longevity. I mean, we were going about 100 miles uh, every 24 hours, and with that pace and speed, we were able to keep up the regen and uh, keep up the power that we needed. Yeah. If we ducked down below four knots, it would stop. Yeah, it'd stop being regen, and then the massive three-blade propellers just drag. So mm -hmm. what we'd actually do is turn the whole system off, mm -hmm. and that would let the propeller free spool. So that was our, our low-speed thing. Now, regen does you're creating power but you're paying something and you're paying speed we noticed that whenever the batteries were fully charged and we couldn't take any more electricity from regen we would turn it off and we'd usually pick up between one to two knots so that yeah was impressive. it was impressive we do have a little display feature um which shows us exactly how much power we're producing and how much power we're using so that's really helpful to keep an eye on mm -hmm. um I'm not sure if all electric motors come with that display. No, it, different companies have different displays, yeah. and not all motors can do regen. It depends on the company. So Ours we is, have an electric yacht yeah. motor, mm -hmm. um, and that's important because 
they're not all the same. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and if you're looking for different features, you know, it's it's research that you have to do because it's a personal preference. Yeah. And we also went with a tiny motor for our size. Mm-hmm. And we're an 18 ton boat and we have a 20 kilowatt motor. So Because we really view this motor as um, an accessory to mm-hmm. our boat. It is not our means of... Uh, of transportation or propulsion or propulsion you're we're not using it in storms um we're not using it in doldrums we're simply using it uh to dock dock that's the main reason we use it yeah and um to get to areas of wind if we can see them <laughs> yeah when there's no wind you can motor just like a couple amps yeah and just motor to the wind line when the wind fills the sails cut it off yeah keep sailing uh when we were crossing the atlantic we really didn't use it very much at all. Yeah, actually, um, there were two times when we did use it because we produced so much power with regen that the batteries were completely full, and we thought that's actually dangerous. Yeah, to overpower. You can overcharge. Yeah, yeah. So, well, actually, the charge controllers did like turn it off, but I just thought, why have the redundancy? So we would shut it off and then be, just be sailing. And then one time we we're thinking, hey, why not? Since we're going to produce the power right after burn it for like an hour yeah so we like cranked it like really hard and we picked up like three more knots by doing that so that was nice yeah. it was like a free push and yeah. then like after it got down like 20 percent, we turned it off and in no time it was charged right back up yeah i mean it was great and then uh nearing the end when we were caught in a high pressure system it didn't generate any power at all and yeah. so we actually had to watch our battery bank and make sure that yeah. we, had, we had enough yeah because power wasn't just like flowing in yeah. like always <laughs> like the fridge was drawing lights would draw mm-hmm. so we had to be a little more cautious with yeah. our power expenditure uh so it's a wonderful feature yeah i wouldn't count on it as your sole means of producing electricity no because... and we didn't mean to either we, yeah. we thought we'd have the solar panels yeah because when i bought the boat i the way I understood it was regen would be all we needed. So we had no solar panels. We, we had nothing. Mm-hmm. And we went out and then we came back with dead batteries. Yeah. Because we had no power. Because we were coastal. Uh, so then we added a generator and solar panels and all that mess. And we weren't planning on regen. And then mm-hmm. it thankfully stepped up to the plate because when the solar panels died, we're like, all right, well, we have the generator and we have plenty of gas. So we, we can keep the batteries charged. And then we never had to turn on the generator. No, which is great because the whole reason we got the electric motor was for peace and quiet, uh, mm-hmm. among many other reasons. But Well, originally, I wanted to go engineless. Right. And Maddie asked me, well, what do we do if we're, we get to a marina and it's really stormy and we can't, you know, warp in or skull in or something? So the electric and, and motor has been <laughs> really wonderful because in times like that, we have been able to just scoot on in. And when we were arriving at the Azores, we did power up that electric motor to get into the marina. Yeah. Because and you don't want to come into a marina flying sails if you don't, you're not really aware Which, of your surroundings. Actually, it turns out it's not legal to come in under sail. Right. In so <laughs> good thing we had our little motor. <laughs> Um, yeah. So we puttered on in there. It was not the fastest thing in the world, but it did get the job done. And I mean, that's our that's kind of the story yeah. of our lives yep. right and now. The other huge advantage of the electric over diesel is the reliability. Uh, when we come in docking, we're moving forward. And then when we're, we need to stop, you can throw that thing in reverse and mm-hmm. it will stop the boat. Our diesel, sometimes that's when it decided when to die. You can also just, like, rev it up right away without having to let it warm up or anything like that. There's no smell. There's no smoke. There's no worry about exhaust fumes fumes or uh, carbon carbon monoxide monoxide poisoning. None of that is a problem. Uh, I could sleep with it on um, Mm -hmm. right next to it. The quarter berth is right over top of the of the engine and I didn't a lot of times Herbie would turn it on during our uh not during the crossing but during our um coastal hopping and I wouldn't even know it was on yeah (laughs) so that's really nice another huge plus from it since there is no warm up and cool off and all that measures uh if you're tacking and you get caught in irons you could back your jib and turn the rudder the other way and on and on or just a little bit of power a little push you yep. get around, you make a tack, and then you turn it off again. Yeah. So it was 
really nice for that. Now, on our entire trip, we never planned on being in the ICW. Yeah, the plan and, was head offshore right yeah. away. But we did get caught in the ICW for an extended period of time, and it was terrible with the electric motor. Yeah, we would never, was... ever suggest doing that. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just terrible. Um, you can't generate enough power to actually overcome the amount of um, current. current that is well, in you the can, ICW. You can, just not for long enough. Right. We, yeah. we just... It wasn't worth it. Uh, it wasn't worth the power draw for us. So that was really challenging and we would not wish that on anybody yeah but for ocean sailing where you're best. actually sailing it's yeah. wonderful because it forces you to sail it forces you to know your stuff to understand your boat and you have so much more fun and you feel so much more accomplished when you reach a destination yeah. under sail rather than having motored halfway across yep it's it's really <laughs> quite wonderful um so yes we would recommend electric if that's your style if that's your pace it's definitely not for everybody now one really nice thing uh while we've been cruising we've come in contact with a lot of people with diesel motors and a common thing that'll happen is they need to go to the fuel dock mm -hmm. and we just stay at anchor for you know a week in a gorgeous place with a lot of sun and charge up with the solar panels and it saves us money and time mm -hmm. and space on the boat we do have a Honda 2000 generator to supplement the batteries. Yes, yeah, so if, if we they need do, to charge. Yeah, if yeah. we do need to charge and there we haven't been moving and there has been no sun, mm -hmm. um, we do have that as a backup system to our backup system. Yeah. And I do recommend that uh, at this stage in the game mm -hmm. just because nothing is ever guaranteed in terms of weather. And it doesn't take up very much space. The thing that it does do is make a lot of noise. Yep. So since, you know, our whole idea was to... Quiet and peace and Have serenity. peace, quiet, and no fuel. Uh, the generator kind of takes away from that a little bit, but we yeah. barely ever use it, and we know that it's there if we need it. It's actually... So converting from diesel to propulsion with a diesel motor versus gas to electric to propulsion, the Honda is actually more efficient at it than a diesel motor because our old diesel motor used to burn about two gallons an hour. When we went from Hatteras to Charleston, which was motoring, in the ICW, we did that on 12 gallons of gas. So that is So even then nothing. the comparison yeah. is like a no-brainer to us. Yeah, it's, it's super yeah. efficient. It's just ridiculously slow. Yeah, insanely so, slow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do not, if you're thinking, oh, I'll get an electric because I want to motor everywhere and mm -hmm. I'll get a nice generator to supplement it, just cut out the middleman, get a diesel. Yeah. If you want to sail places. Yeah, the positives yeah. for us is that it, it helps us to slow down. It helps us to really experience the cultures of the areas where we stop. Since time is not an issue for us, it allows us to just slow our entire lives down and experience nature and the world around the us. world around us we're it's at the mercy life. of the weather it's a yeah. different life yeah everything takes twice as long as you think it will yep. <laughs> as far as safety goes there have been a lot of people who have told us that it's unsafe which we really don't quite understand or unseamanship like <laughs> yeah that one really doesn't make any sense yeah um as far as outrunning a storm... Yeah, the, you're not going to be able to outrun a storm with a diesel either. Absolutely not. There's a thing called haul speed. Yeah. So, and we're slow. The thing is, we have, um, we have a full keel, and we're a very heavy boat. So, our boat is not built to run out a, outrun a storm, it's, whether it has a diesel motor or an electric motor or no motor. It's just not built to outrun a storm. We're built to... Survive the storm. Survive the storm. Uh, withstand the storm. And so... And ride it out. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we heave to really nicely. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do when there's a bad storm. We would never try to outrun a storm with a diesel. Yeah, and then another <laughs> thing, like safety-wise, another thing we hear is, oh, you're right by a cliff, and then it the power goes out. Why would you be right by a cliff? No, so we, yeah. Like, when we are coming up to Bermuda, we were about 10 miles off the barrier reef that way if anything happened we had tons of time to not be on the rocks 
Yeah, it's just a matter of safely sailing and being aware of your surroundings. Yeah. Um, we really can't think of a time when it would be safer to have a diesel motor, except if you are stuck in the doldrums and running out of food. Yeah. Which we planned for that because we knew that that was a real... That's a, that's an issue. ...issue that we could run into. Yeah, so um, while we're in the doldrums, <laughs> we actually covered about 20 miles a day with our light air sails. So yeah. We put the sails up and move at less than a knot average. It was rough. Yeah. Uh, we did not enjoy that. However, we knew that it was going to be a problem and we had prepared so we had tons of food tons of games we were never yes lots of games we were never starving we were never afraid for our lives at any point um and that's just a decision that we made yeah if if that if you don't have the time available to do that like we have all the time in the world that's the thing that kind of sets us apart we left our lives behind to do this. Yeah, we don't have to go to work on Monday morning. Right. So if the winds aren't right and we can't get back to work on Monday, mm -hmm. well, we're not going back, so... We are full-time cruisers. This is our full-time lifestyle. So we can afford to take 20 days to get to Bermuda, which mm -hmm. is what we did. Yeah. We can afford to take 24 days to get to the Azores. Um, that's not in... The cards for a lot of people. Yeah, a lot and of people so, have work they have to get yeah. back to, and they have schedules and deadlines. And, and an electric motor yeah. is not going to be for you if you're one of those people, because you need to be able to guarantee a time. And honestly, if you're in a sailboat, nothing ever should be scheduled. You can't guarantee anything if you're going to actually sail a boat. If you have a power sailboat... <laughs> Then yeah. Then yeah. You have, have that you have that <laughs> that luxury. Freedom and luxury. Yeah. We what we have is just a different type of freedom. Mm -hmm. And so um we're not saying that it is an alternative to a diesel. Yeah, it is not a replacement <laughs> of a diesel at yeah. all. It's it takes up the same space as the diesel, mm -hmm. but it's not a replacement. And the only reason it takes up the same space is because of the batteries. Uh yeah. if it weren't for the batteries, it would actually take up a smidgen. Which, speaking of, of the, the batteries, space. we are heavily looking at replacing our AGMs mm -hmm. with lithium. lithium. And the weight savings are insane. Yeah. Uh, the space and weight. Yeah. It, it's like a tenth of the weight. The problem there is the cost. and yep, it's, a um, tenth, it's ten times the cost. Since electric is probably the future, especially for cars, as we are seeing... Yeah. Day, to, day to day. I mean, more and more cars are electric now. Every single car manufacturing company has an electric car. Uh, and so as a result, the technology is growing rapidly. Mm -hmm. So once that technology grows enough to hit a plateau, that's when those batteries are going to come down in price. Moore's Law. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, Torquedo on their website sells a brand new i3 and i8 battery pack. Like, you can already buy car batteries for your boat mm -hmm. at an insane price. Yeah, that's the but problem. But it, it's, it's a thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the future. That's the reality of the now, situation. That being said, we've actually had an electric motor for about four years now. Yes. And the price of the batteries when we did the AGMs was $1,800. And then lithium at that time was about $20,000. Right now, our, in, our identical battery bank would cost between seven and ten thousand. So they've come down. They've already come by down half. substantially. Yeah. yeah. So now it's still ridiculously expensive, but a little more affordable. So we're looking at options now. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And you know, planning for our future because we still have a long way to go. And yep. having a motor is <laughs> not completely essential for us, but no. it's a very good backup system and it's really good for peace of mind. And so with that We'd like to open it up to you all. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter, your experiences with electric versus your experiences with diesel. We're very interested to talk to other people who have tried this out. Mm -hmm. And if you have any tricks or tips for regen, I honestly just learned about the propeller diameter uh, last week. <laughs> so it's, it's all new information that just keeps growing and the more you dig into it the more you find that it's still being learned absolutely so if this is the kind of lifestyle that 
you think you'd be interested in, we can be a great resource to you. Um, having sailed for now one and a half years uh, an across and crossed an ocean, we have quite a lot of experience with the electric motor and its uh, abilities. So thank you for watching, and uh, hopefully this helped with your understanding of electric motors and regen mm -hmm. capabilities. We look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.